All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome um, to the New York regular trading hours. I am recording a live session. Uh, today is Thursday, July 13th, 2023, at a very difficult time during the overnight session. Um, I actually blew out the account on one contract. So, it's no bueno. Um, the NASDAQ has not been behaving according to uh, the models that I use uh, on Thursday. It's been doing very strange things, and I will outline that in a video. I have that actually already in a video. So, anyways, um, first entry here is a turtle soup entry pattern, so looking for uh, false false breakout or like you know for price to reject a new high uh, and I put it at a half standard deviation of this black candle here I uh, did it one tick before that uh, and I'm going to aim for the nearest low which is there and uh, this price goes back in my favor I'll move the stop to break even we'll go from there So, um, you know, regardless of the hardship that I face, the mistakes that I make, I'm going to be sticking with one contract. Um, I'm always going to try and enter in on an ICT pattern and uh, of some kind, and I'm always going to aim for that low-hanging fruit, quote unquote, the the nearest liquidity. Okay, so I'm going to move move that to that high. We'll see if that stops price. So the multiplier I used there was turtle soup pattern. All right, that does not look like that's going to stop price. So we'll probably have to try again. And we'll try um, one tick ahead of one standard deviation of that black candle. Okay, we're going to be stopped out. Okay. And if price wants to reject there at the half standard deviation, or just shy of it, I'll wait to see if we get another ICT multiplier come into the market, and then we'll go from there. I'm not interested in longing this. I'm only interested in shorting this. Okay, so we're down 109.58 on the session. Had PPI today. The number was actually negative, and I suppose that uh, the thinking would be that if the number is negative, you know, Fed's not going to raise interest rates. I'm assuming that's going to be the uh, reasoning behind that. I'm not going to long this, certainly not. Um, that could be a. Uh, all right, I'm going to lower this to a half standard deviation. 75, 15, 3 quarters. And I'll put the stop up at around 1.5. And we're going to aim for that same low, so that 52 quarters. If I can get this filled. Okay, just aiming for exactly half standard deviation. We were a couple ticks shy of that. If I see displacement to the downside, if I see uh, a multiplier to the downside, I will go short on that. Right now I'm just trying to use a turtle soup pattern, uh, just assuming that one of these highs is going to reject and it will come back down or give me at least the ability to put a break-even stop in. 
It's the only multiplier that I have available to me to the short side, and I'm not longing this, so until we get another multiplier to take us back down. Got a large opening range gap below. Um, so I need a multiplier on which to enter my one contract. And the only one I have available to me right now is a turtle suit pattern. Until we get some displacement to the downside. We'll see if we get filled on this. I put it exactly at a half standard deviation. Uh, one tick short. One tick short. Is that what we're doing? We're doing one tick. Literally one tick short, three ticks short. Okay, well, that's the case. I'll have to wait for another multiplier to enter. I'm not going to enter at the market. I'm going to try and avoid doing that. didn't fill me due to spread. Okay, maybe I should have put it at alright, we will enter at the we will enter at the market now. Short one. I should have put that one tick ahead. I'm being honest, that should have been one tick ahead. I'm gonna bring the stop down to just above one or just above one standard deviation there. was exactly at the high and because of two tick spread I didn't get filled so should have put that one tick ahead Just a reminder for the future so we're we're short one it's the only only multiplier that I have available to me on that was the turtle soup. No other multiplier was available until we get some displacement lower. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just put this now to break even. Tense set. Uh, 610, 75. I'm just going to plop that right on break even. Try and preserve capital. comes and stops me out. Um, I'll wait for another uh, multiplier. I'm expecting price to reject and come back to that um, large opening range gap that we have currently sitting below price. Okay, I got stopped out. Uh, we're going to try one tick shy if we can get it. Uh, the one standard deviation. That's the only multiplier that I have available to me is a turtle suit pattern. Until we get some displacement to the downside. basically break even on that 119 okay yeah I'm not gonna long this no way Jose so no multiplier available to me right now kinda need displacement in order for me to um, get short
Well, all right. Use a bullish shorter block right there on the sell stop. Like that. We can hit that at the market. Aim for the nearest low. So there's our bear sorter block right there. Could be. And I can just take that at take that on a sell stop. There's a multiplier. Low there is uh, 5.99 half, so we'll just get short right on a sell stop. Okay, we're gonna aim for that same low. And the stop is going to go a few ticks above that high. Idea is that if price got below the low of these three candles, that would now be an ICT bear sorter block. So that's the first multiplier here in the series. I tried to get obviously short on the turtle soup. I got stopped out break even. Maybe that was too quick of a break even stop for being honest with one another. Probably was. If we get stopped out, then I look for another turtle soup entry to get short. I'm not long. I'm just not gonna long this. I mean, it'd be kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'll bump this up two ticks. One, two. In case it wants to wick me. Aim it for our nearest low. We're on regular trading hours. I think the reasonable draw on liquidity right now should be to our opening range gap down here. I'm pretty sure price has delivered all of the buy side liquidity in the world. So I don't really see the need for price to go higher. Price needs a draw on liquidity, and I'm not seeing it to the upside. I do see a large opening range gap to the downside, though. So, we are uh, short one contract using money management. Um, on the NASDAQ, we are on regular trading hours, as this is regular trading hours, and our ICT multiplier is a bear sorter block. Uh, I got short on a sell stop on the low of this candle. Uh, it actually filled me pretty freaking terribly, but that was the idea. And the target is the nearest low. So, and the stop is a few ticks above that high. Assuming that the draw on liquidity should be to the opening range gap at some point. And if we get stopped out, I'll try to get short again, one tick ahead of the one standard deviation, and call that a turtle soup. Yeah, price has been behaving very strangely today. I don't I can't keep up. I don't I don't know what it's doing. I have a video I've not uploaded to YouTube. Oh, I'm sticking with one contract. I'll try and try and get some wins under under my belt. 
get anything really. Regular trading hours have been treating me better than uh, electronic trading hours recently. It's probably just because price is moving. And when price is not moving, it's difficult for me to ascertain what it's doing. Really need movement to be able to, you know, see it. I don't usually enter like to enter multipliers uh, like order block on a stop, but it is an option. Ideally, price should just keep falling right through it on your stop, but obviously it didn't happen. It turned right around. Going on electronic trading hours. You can see that was PPI back back here. We blew right past that, another um, 608. It was just crazy stuff, really. Um, we had a London high here that was, I thought, a very reasonable high. Blew right past that. PPI high was a very reasonable high. Blew right past that. So it just doesn't, there doesn't appear to be anything to stop this train, really. I mean that, just nothing. So, and price has been behaving very strangely today, and I probably shouldn't even trade it, to be honest with you. I don't know what it's doing. Feels like it's almost manual. So strange. Very strange. I don't know what it's doing. I mean, other than it's like, obviously, it's going straight up, right? But, you know, you start longing it now after it's up hundreds of points. This thing could rip down on you 200 points in a second. A flash. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be longing this, in my opinion. Not after it's up, like, 300 points. It's trading efficiently right now. It's probably going higher. Probably going to get stopped out on this one. Try to get short. Oh, uh, ICT. Bearish breaker on a stop. All right. We're stopped out. The next attempt is going to come up uh, at 222.25, just shy of that one standard deviation. It's going to be a turtle suit pattern. Bear shorter block multiplier did not work for us, so we're down 48.74. I really don't know what it's trying to. Oh, I, no, I got no idea. One tick shy of that one standard deviation. Ah, uh, yeah, see, there it was. All right, we're getting displacement to the downside. That was probably, probably it. I'm gonna call that a turtle soup entry and place our stop just above that high that we just made, and aim for the same low. So that's a turtle soup entry. Um. And stop. See, I was one. Th what was that? This son of a bitch. Ah, uh, that was a little bit more than one tick. All right, just got our displacement to the downside. So looking good. Good displacement. Should draw back down to the opening range gap now. Um, stop is going to go break even. 612. 
going to aim for our nearest low. Uh, I put that break even stop too early. I'm I'm pushing it up. That's why we're on one contract. Oh, I get stopped out break even on this one. Cause that's a, I mean, if it's not going to put the high in the London session, oh nine fifty four would be a very reasonable time for it to put in a high. That's a very Reasonable time for price to put in a high if it's not going to put it in the London session. So, next multiplier would be uh, the SIBI that we just formed, and then institutional order flow entry drill just hit it at the market short. Of course, I'm already short from higher, uh, but you do have another multiplier there available to you. I think that that's a very good looking high. And it would be, if it's not going to do it during London, it's not going to make a high during London, this would be New York AM session right before the 10 o'clock hour would be a very reasonable time for price to put in a high, I think, if it's not going to do it during London. So I'm feeling pretty good that we are going to deliver the low where my buy limit is. So feeling pretty good that that was the high. Um, multiplier here would be breakaway gap and potentially institutional order flow. Uh, so, yeah, institutional order flow entry drill. So breakaway gap, IOFED multipliers. Seeing seeing those. Um, what I was saying there. So that was pretty good displacement. That was at a good time for it to put in the high. So feeling pretty good that that was the high. All right, no IOF, IOFED. Coming back into WIC inefficiency multiplier and SIBI multipliers. I would not long this under any circumstances, considering how much the NASDAQ has gone up already. It's got to have delivered some sort of higher time frame level. All right, coming back through that SIBI, trading back through it, would like to see close within it, coming up to that uh, bear sorter block. Of course, I don't want to be stopped out, but uh, if I am, we're going to short it again on another turtle suit, and then that would be a three drives pattern. We're definitely not longing this, not here, not with an opening range gap below as well. All things considered, I think it would be very unwise at this point to take a long. So you can see the price closed within that SIBI there, right at the halfway point of that, which is good. So that would be a decent multiplier for you. I think the target is also very reasonable. It's the first low. All right, I'm 
I'm gonna get off camera for a second. I'm just listening to music on the computer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move. Yeah, move the stop to break even now. At this point, I wouldn't want to be stopped out on this. We'll do uh, right at the 612. So, we're drawing down to the opening range gap. Um, We'll see how far into the opening range gap price wants to get. I'm just going to go ahead and take my profit at the low. Just go ahead and take my points and, and reassess from there. Um, if we get another multiplier on which to enter to go further into the opening range gap, then I will have a look at that. But as for right now, I'm just going to aim for, uh, what is that? Fifteen thousand five fifty two twenty five. That's going to be the target, and I feel pretty confident at this point that that uh, we'll get filled filled on that before we get stopped out. So feeling pretty good on this one, guys. I'm going to make some coffee, so things are going to go quiet.
Yo, so this has just been terrible price action today and virtually impossible for me to read. So we might be stopped out break even on this. And if I am stopped out break even, I will attempt another short. Um, I do think that we are at some point going to get down to that opening range gap. Michael at this point would say, well, we're not getting the opening range gap if there's unfinished business above. But I don't see said unfinished business. All right, we're back to that old Sibby. And <clears throat> this is really tough, man. I mean, this is really, really hard. I don't know uh, what price is up to, man. Doesn't want to get down to the opening range gap. Doesn't want to get down to liquidity. Just wants to go higher. So, but the second I try and long this, it will dump. So you don't want to long this. Not here. Not not after it already being up so many hundreds of points. It's a bit of a high resistance liquidity run here. Well, you know what? I will just leave that with the brush. So that's that Sibby there. Sibby right there. Came up, reclaimed it. And good reaction from Price off of the Sibby thus far. Yeah, that's why I put this, the break-even stops now literally at break-even because um, if I put it one or two ticks ahead and it's a high-resistance liquidity run, it'll come back for it. So I don't, uh, I don't even put it two ticks in profit. I literally just put it right on break-even, and I'll pay the commissions because for that exact reason right there. You see how if I would have put that two ticks in profit, I'd be stopped out right now. And... Uh, yeah, I, I do play it that tight. Absolutely. Um, this is a high resistance liquidity run signature. So you can see that we started a leg down, but all right, we get one clean move down, we get immediately, we get a big retracement. So this whole move is, is initiating a move down, but it's it's high resistance. But it is it is the regular trading hour, so Hopefully things will will speed up and head down to liquidity, head down to the opening range gap. Of course. I nearly had the absolute high. I put my order at 6.22 and at 6.22 quarters, and that high was 6.21 half, so it was three ticks off the absolute high, um, which sucks. So instead of 10 points higher, I had to enter in at the market, which is why I like to enter in uh, on a stop or preferably on a limit order, right? So, because... Uh, your fills can be pretty freaking terrible at the market, so prefer to use the limits, but guessing where price is going to stop on a turtle suit pattern, kind of guessing where the high is going to be is virtually impossible. I mean, I use uh, standard deviation projections of these bullish order blocks. Uh, you can see that, let me see if I use 0 0.75. Let's see if it was that. Yeah, it was pretty much that. So, okay. All right, we are 38 minutes into the recording. Um, still negative on the session, but yeah, it's just been a very, uh, you know, I, I will tell y'all some of the strange things that I've seen today so y'all don't think I'm just like complaining for no reason. Um, so electronic trading hours, we had that thing at New York Open Midnight. That was pretty ridiculous. Um, 
we had an attractive high here put in a, in the London session, right when you would expect to see a high put in. We ran that before CPI, which was strange. And then CPI was a kind of a standard uh, run both sides of the book macro. So that was standard enough. Um, of course, the Asian session last night was very strange because just straight from resettlement, I was just usually consolidates not just straight up during the Asian session, but it just decided that, you know what, we're going after more buy side. And so that's what it did. And so those are the things that I'm telling you are not normal, like very strange, very, very strange. All right, let's check our other indices. I mean, you can see the NASDAQ, right, is pretty divergent from the other two stock indices at the moment with how high it is. All right, I guess it wants to come in. Wow. Almost feels like this is like a manual intervention day, like, like something's going on. It's very strange. Like the price behavior is just abnormal. I mean, it really is. Especially that New York Open Midnight thing. That was weird. And honestly, that's why I've lost fake dollars on top step because price is not performing as expected. So I'm assuming that we're on our way down to sell side liquidity into opening range gap. Uh, and then we're just doing a high resistance liquidity run. I, that's what I'm assuming right now. It would make sense for price to do that unless it's completely lost its freaking mind. I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm going to move it above that high, so 609.50. We'll lock in something. So. Um, another uh, multiplier here, inverted BISI, if price wanted to invert that, come back down, it'd be an inverted fair value gap there. So on a SIBI right here and WIC inversion, there's some PD arrays standing in the way between price, current market price and my stop. I, any of those could be your multiplier to enter. I think the most obvious one would just be that SIBI here. So, see that the closes are respecting below the 50%. It's a good sign. That's kind of the most obvious PD array. It's not the only one, though. You can also say that that BISI right there could be an inverted fair value gap as we traded through it. All right. So, that BISI right there, inverted fair value gap. if price wants to trade back down. I'm assuming this is a high resistance liquidity run and we are running to sell side. Slowly and with great effort. Yeah, you always want a multiplier. Got to have something. Okay, I'm going to move the stop above that high. 600 quarters. We're going to lock in nine more points of profit. Let's lock it in. Nothing wrong with locking it in. Rolling with one NASDAQ contract. Taking a sweet time. Currently sitting in drawdown. Prices on a high resistance liquidity run. Should be drawing to opening range gap.
another ICT multiplier there. Uh, bear sorter block, you can enter in on the low of that candle and put the stop up above the high of the order block. If the order block is going to work out, it should just plummet. Those are not my favorite entries, to be perfectly honest with you. But they, they are there. They are an option. So that SIBI was another multiplier to enter short. I mean, whether it works out at this point or not, price has been so strange today. I don't know. It's doing very, it's very, just very strange things today. I think. I know my ICT pretty well. All right, looks like we are going to be stopped out on this. And uh, I guess I'm just happy to come away with anything today, the way that price has been. So. You get any sort of profit, lock in 12 points. Be happy with that. I mean, not happy, but better than losing. Yeah, it doesn't want to go down at all. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious, but longing it at this point, oh my. Seems very risky. So I'm assuming this is not a reversal and this is a signature of a high resistance liquidity run to the sell side. Very high resistance. I, the only thing I can do is sit and watch. If I move the stop anywhere, it's liable to get hit. And so, um, yeah. There was another entry multiplier right there, stop, a sell stop at 81.50. Risky, but it is there.
not want to go down at all. It is resisting that downward movement. A lot. All right, I'm going to move the stop to the close of that candle. 589 quarters. And we're going to lock that in. Just locking it in. Do I want that to happen? No, but price is behaving very strangely today.
All right, well, we're at a small profit now, 151.68. Um, I'll show you that execution. And uh, I'll call that a video on that, ex on that trade. So I'll start up another recording probably. Bye.